Hey everybody, Patrick here with Rap4. It is November 5th, 2012, and this is Monday Night Paintball. Actually, it is Tuesday, November 6th, and the reason why we're doing Tuesday Night Paintball this week is because we decided to rebuild this video set. We're getting such good feedback from you guys on all these video projects we're doing. We decided to uh, put a little time and effort into making them even better. So we got a little better acoustics in here, much better lighting, a lot more space. And as always, if there's anything you'd like to see added to the set here, we are always open for suggestions on our Facebook page. Got a great week of videos for you. We're going to check out some new USMG gear that just hit our catalog. And this weekend, we're going to be attending a private MAGFED only event. Uh, at an undisclosed location. So we're, we're gonna show you a little bit about what it takes to gear up for one of those. For those of you US citizens, happy election day, and no matter how you're gonna vote, I hope that you do, because men better than you and I have fought and died for your right to do so. This week on Monday Night Paintball, we're gonna announce two new ways that you can win a free pair of clear Hawkeye goggles. Now, on our Facebook page this week, we posted up a picture of this air tank. And this one's pretty interesting. It looks like during the manufacturing process, a moth made it into the factory and was laminated here to the carbon fiber of this stubby HPA tank. And you definitely don't see that every day. Uh, gave us all kind of a laugh. Now, if you have any interesting photos like this, I don't know if it's a, a crazy, awesome sniper paintball shot or maybe some gear you have uh, that's uh, got an interesting defect like this. If you have something that you do not see every day that you think everybody would like to see, uh, go ahead and email it to me, actually. It's patrick at rap4.com. Any really good pictures I get, I am going to post them on our Facebook page as well as on Monday Night Paintball, and you will be the winner of a free pair of Hawkeye goggles. Good luck to you. And speaking of free goggles, we are going to post up a new photo contest this week on our Facebook page, and it has to do with location. We want to see you wearing your Rap 4 clothing, whether it's a hat, a t-shirt, any kind of gear, uh, any kind of Rap peril that you have. We want to see a picture of you wearing it somewhere cool, like next to the Grand Canyon, or if you're in the military and you want to throw on your Rap 4 hat while you're on duty, anything like that. Go to our Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash rap4usa, and look under the cover photo on the right. There'll be a link for you to go ahead and upload your photo. Now this is going to be voted on by your fellow paintball players, not by us. So they're going to choose the coolest photo, and you will win a pair of free Hawkeye goggles. Now to answer some of your guys' questions about Fold the Gap this year, yes, we will be there. We have a rep named George. He's going to be there on Saturday, and you can find him in the Dead Man's Hand tent. That's one of our sponsor teams. He will have a 468 with him, so this is a great opportunity for those of you going to Fold the Gap to get your hands on it. You can feel it, break it apart, you might even be able to shoot it. So go ahead and look for George in the Dead Man's Hand tent on Saturday only. Don't miss out. Now time for some paintball news. It looks like at World Cup Asia 2012, there's going to be an all-female team by the name of Poison Ivy. Now personally, I love seeing more women get into paintball. There's not too many of them. Definitely want to encourage them. And I'm actually kind of hoping they dominate a few all-guy teams out there. Maybe prove a point or two. Big fan of underdogs. So Poison Ivy, good luck. We will be watching you and rooting for you. Now it looks like the Arizona Scenario Paintball League is putting on an event in Peoria, Arizona at Cowtown Paintball. It's called Fallen America, it deals with different bands of militias fighting uh, centralized government. It looks very interesting. If you are anywhere near Peoria, Arizona, be sure to go to that. And that brings us to this week's topic of discussion. In the back, we have an entire palette full of old T68 Gen 5s. Now these no longer work. We've parted them out, uh, they're broken or whatever. These are from like years ago. Uh, and we are wondering what we should do with them. Some employees said we should have a video like blowing them up, the whole pile in slow motion. Some people said we should put it on fire. Um, I was thinking we should get a couple of girls in bikinis that kind of swim through them or whatever. We want to know what you think. So go to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash rap4usa and let me know. I'm going to start a post right now asking you what you think we should do with, I don't know, it's probably like 70 to 100 of these old T68 Gen 5s. Looking for some good ideas, guys. Now this past week on Facebook, I received a private message from a paintball player named Jonathan Little. Jonathan was out at Operation End War 3 and he actually got the award for best defender for the red team. And he messaged me saying that he's part of a two-man paintball team and they're all about paintball pistols. They like to carry Rap 4 stuff and he wanted to know if we could feature him on Monday Night Paintball. So here's a video that he submitted. So how do you guys like the pistols? Uh, love them. I love it. Now you want to send us a beta for them? <laughs> I gotta get me one. Yeah. They're awesome. Definitely get me one. 
Seeing how y'all use it, y'all. Make a Colt 1911. <laughs> that's what you need to make. <laughs> M1911. That's yes. Yeah. Make like it, make it right. fast. Really like then when you get it made, to this copy. Which was your favorite? <laughs> Which was your favorite right there out of all of them? I love the way this. I don't say the Glock's my favorite. Yeah. I like the way the Glock looks. I like the feel of the P99. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot but I like the way it looks. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is probably it fits my hand hurt. I like it. I got the chubby hand, so this works perfectly. growing, so. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for the footage and for their support. I will go ahead and let Omar know about the desire for a 1911. Personally, I would love to have one of those as well. Now, this past week, a customer by the name of Richard Rowland went on our Facebook page and wanted to know about the DMAG wells and what they would look like. Well, Richard, here I have the MKP2. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, as far as the marker itself, uh, just to go over a few key points that Omar has mentioned in previous videos, um, the second generation of the mag kits will be made in America. Therefore, they can be higher quality, much higher tolerances inside, which is really good for pneumatic machines like paintball markers. Um, also, this cutout here, this is optional. This will come filled. You'll have to punch this out yourself where you can put in a simulation simulation uh, charging handle although that's optional the way that the bolt works on the uh, phenom you have no need for that it would only be there um, if that was like a preference of yours now to talk about the magwell here it is it's got a real aggressive look a nice grip on the front for those of you you know doing magwell grabs this one's got an afg in the way uh, but if that wasn't there that'd be a good place to grip onto um, using the same ar style mag release right there also Omar decided to fill the void here um, on the trigger guard of the MKP uh, the other uh, markers versions uh, do look similar now he uh, also gave it kind of an aggressive look if you can look right now uh, I'll put my hand behind it so you can see it better um, if you can see right now the magazine actually is angled forward a little bit during the design process I remember I remember uh, Omar walking around and and asking like should this go straight down or should this go forward a bit and we all kind of voted that it just it just looked a lot more you know, like a weapon uh, a forward like that so he went went ahead with that design I think it looks really cool um, these are going to be made out of the same high quality material as the old mag walls as far as that uh, composite material a lot of gun accessories are made out of it it's actually not too much different than this Magpul AFG as far as materials go uh, very robust and very affordable and they do remove the same way there's one pin take this takedown pin down right here and then the uh, magwell rotates out so when you get your D-Mags, uh, you will be able to just simply pull a pin out, remove the T-68 Magwell, and put on the D-Magwell um, and that quickly. If you wanted to switch, you could even do, it, do that during a game if you got a quick second. Um, so yeah, so that is the D-Magwell for the MKP-2. Um, it looks similar to the ones, the other ones. Uh, right now, I think they're on order. I, I don't know if we have any in here. Uh, I'll have to look through Omar's area to try to find one, uh, but they all look pretty similar to this one. So that's what you can expect. All right, guys, now before you get too excited, I'm going to start off by saying I do not have a price and I do not have a release date, but I'm going to answer some of the questions you guys have been asking on Facebook about the Barrett 50 cal. Now, this is has T68 internals, okay, and this is a custom marker. This is custom made. There's only a few of these in existence. We uh, went and custom made this one as part of the R&D process. You want to make sure it's going to work before you order, you know, however many of them. This one right here uses some real firearm accessories as well as uh, T68 right here. You can kind of see the uh, split fire hanging out. Now the reason why this project went back to the drawing board is because of the D-Mags actually. We want to make a D-Mag compatible. It would seem kind of pointless to uh, you know spend this much money on a marker um, and lug it around the battlefield if it didn't shoot first strike rounds. It just seems kind of, uh, seems pretty lame. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that this thing is going to perform out on the battlefield and uh, basically uh, be as scary as it looks as far as getting getting hits. So this right now is back on the drawing board. It's on a list. Um, we have everything done pretty much except for this magwell area. It shouldn't be too long, but there are things in front of it. So we do not we do not have a release date for you. We do not have a price for you. But if you have any more specific questions, you can go ahead and ask them on Facebook. Um, anything I know, I'll let you know. Uh, but as far as you know, its performance and everything like that. Right now, this is shooting paintballs. Um, it would be pretty lame to show you the performance when the first strike round is going to go farther and way more accurate. When we have a working version of that, we will do an in-depth video as far as the creative process, the manufacturing process, and its capabilities, you know, weight, uh, dimensions, all that kind of stuff. All right, guys, for this week's tactical tip, we're going to talk about pieing corners. 
Now imagine that this old dusty sideways table is actually a wall. We're going to talk about the most advantageous way for you to turn a corner, whether it be you know out of a window or doorway or just a corner of a building. It's a very good CQB uh, tactic. It's pretty basic. It's one of the first things you learn um, in mount in the United States Army. So uh, just to talk about how most people take corners, you see a lot of people do this. Peek and look before they get their muzzles up. They look, then they aim, and at that point, you're kind of a step behind the game. To set yourself up for success, the most advantageous position you can be in when you take that corner is already aiming, okay? What's the fastest way to aim at somebody to get your gun up and on target? It's to already be there. So, next time you take corners, what you might want to do is have your muzzle up, then take it. This changes your pivot position from basically your body turning like this makes the pivot uh, on the tip of your muzzle. So imagine like the tip of your barrel is attached to a pole and you have to walk around that pole. That's pine corners. And that refers to basically taking a slice out of a circular motion, like a pie slice. Every time I uh, take this corner, I take a slice out of the pie. So next time you are moving around in an urban environment, be sure to pie your corners, whether it be the window, doorway, or the edge of a building definitely going to set yourself up for success. Also, just a little tip, be sure not to flag corners if you're going to. Don't want to do this because not only can I get hit on the barrel, which counts in most paintball fields, but I'm letting them know that I'm about to take it. So, take a step back, don't get ahead of yourself, and pile your corners. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Now remember that Monday Night Paintball is your show. We use the content that we get off of our Facebook page and anybody can go on there and let us know what they want to see. So if you have anything you'd like to see in the next episode of Monday Night Paintball, just go to facebook.com slash rat4usa and let us know. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there.